Okay, so a client has brought me um, an old computer and a new computer. The old computer was working fine until it took a fall down a flight of stairs onto some tile. Um, so screen's broken. This is all bent up um, front. I'm sorry, the uh, the top and uh, and bottom display hinges just really messed up. And yeah, there's the cracked screen. Um, so yeah, um, he already bought a, uh, a new laptop here. Um, the original is an HP, the new one's a Dell. And he just wants me to open it up, get the drive out of uh, the old one, plug that drive into the new one and transfer his files. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Looks like three across the bottom, three across the top. So that little black one went in there. Not that we're really gonna worry about putting this back together. It looks like those screw holes are a little bit too small for that driver. This one. Okay, so looks like there's a uh, probably for a mouse a little transceiver thing there. It bit the dust. Okay, so let's just find an edge here and see about taking it apart. Uh, not really wanting to. Okay. Open her up. Okay, so more than likely I have to get in here and kind of pry it apart. That broke. All right, let's go with metal. Yeah, just to get it started and then go around with plastic or nylon, I think this is. But generally, you don't want to like prime like this is okay to open up a laptop just at one point just to get it started. If you were to take that metal piece and go around, you'd end up scratching the thing pretty badly. Not that that matters on this laptop because it's uh, not going to be repaired. It would cost well over the amount of money this laptop is worth to uh, to replace everything that's broken on it. I um, I may ask him if I can keep it. I think it might be a, a good project to maybe turn this into a, a desktop computer. Or maybe a wall-mounted computer. Something right here doesn't feel like it's one to let go. So on most uh, newer laptops, including most likely this one over here, whenever you take the screws out of the bottom, you then just take the bottom cover off and that's all there is to it. This one has, um, has it to where the top comes off and the majority of the computer's components are uh, in the bottom piece. And there's something right here, there it went. <laughs> something did not want to let go. Okay. So, oh wow, well, yeah, the, the keyboard even is coming apart. So you open that up, you disconnect some cables, which are just held in with some little clips. That was trackpad, this is probably LED for the keyboard, and this is the main keyboard. And then, there we go. Yeah, this keyboard is held in with uh, plastic rivets, and the impact 
actually broke out all of them as well. High, uh, high energy fall there. Okay. So I'm looking for the drive in the computer and I'm not seeing it. Most likely it's a solid state drive on the other side of the motherboard. So in that case, I would need to take the motherboard out. I'm just gonna go around and disconnect all of its little cables that are plugged into it. So that was for the, was that a the power button? This is for the display. This guy was for, looks like volume buttons and headphone jack. This is probably a webcam. This is for the power connection. And then we've got speakers over here. Okay, that's, I think, all the cables. All right, so now I go around and take all the screws that are hold the mother, holding the motherboard in and out. This is actually a lot. Typically, motherboards are only hold, held in with two or three screws. Um, it looks like the motherboard may have been flexed a bit. So right here, it, I don't know if y'all can see it, but it's kind of flexed up like this. So it may have actually broken the motherboard too. So if that's the case, I wouldn't be able to use it as a, a desktop computer or a, an all-in-one, or not all-in-one, but um, wall mount. All right. What I'm doing is just kind of lifting up and looking to see if it moves any. So it's kind of looking like it needs to come out this side first. Cooler may be attached to the, um, I'm sorry, this fan may be attached to the cooler. So I'm going to see about taking screws that are holding it in out. Looks like there's one here. Still really not wanting to move. Something around here holding it. Okay. Yeah, so the fan is part of this cooler. This little bit right here is running over to where the processor is. I have a feeling that this would have come out already if it wasn't for the fall. But the fall has bent things in here to the point where they really don't want to come out now. Okay, that loosened up. I don't think the battery is holding it in. There is something right here that's like not wanting to let go. There's not a screw. Hmm. 
let's go ahead and take the battery out. Okay, so yeah, I think it was wedged in with the battery. Okay, I think I see the the solid state drive. Uh, the Wi-Fi adapter came out too. I, I guess I should have unscrewed that. Uh, anyway, ordinarily I would have looked this up, uh, the manual online, and seen how it was supposed to come apart. But with it being as broken as it is, I'm not really worried about breaking anything except for possibly breaking the solid state drive, which is under here, which. Looks to be in good condition. Holding with a screw. Comes out. Kind of up at a 30 degree angle and it should shimmy out here. There we go. So, comes with a little, I don't know if it's a heat shield or something to keep it uh, from conducting. There is the solid state drive, which should have all those files on it. It is a M.2 solid state drive, 128 gigabytes in capacity, and it's a SATA based one. So I need a SATA capable um, M.2 to USB adapter. Okay, I'm not finding my SATA to USB adapter, so we are going to actually put it in this guy. So this I use as an external drive. Um, it just lets you install a uh, M.2. I believe this is SATA. We'll see if it actually works. There's two different types of M.2s, two basic types, um, SATA and NVMe. I believe this is a um, SATA based uh, adapter. Yeah, so ordinarily what you would do is you would take this and you'd plug it into um, a desktop computer with the power and data cables. Um, and I was going to use a little SATA um, to USB adapter. I know I have, it's just not seeing it, but... Okay. Let's get this guy fired up. I think it's coming to life. Yeah, he was just sleeping, so he had just closed this. Hopefully it has. Yeah, uh, God does it. What is this? It kind of looks like, um, like an ethernet. But no, it's it's USB uh, USB A. I'm pretty sure, so I can plug this in. Nice. All right, let's get logged in. Account. Okay, so it came up and uh, it's already recognized the drive. It put it as a, a D drive, and Windows right there is just the label on the drive. So his files are in users. The account name, which is Brad, that's 
That's his name. He's Brad. So the first time you go into um, a user's folder on a drive that from, was from another install of Windows, it has to kind of get permission to open it up on this computer or the new computer or the different computer. It doesn't really have to be new. And that can take, you know, 10 seconds or several minutes. So we'll just let it do its thing. Okay, that wasn't too bad. So I want to get his desktop documents and downloads. And what I'm doing is I'm just holding down control on the keyboard as I click the things that I want to get. We'll get his favorites folder. Music, probably don't need OneDrive. He has an Outlook folder in here and a Pictures folder. And we'll get the Videos folder too. And this is Windows 11, I just realized. Okay, so I'm going to right click on one of them and tell it to copy. And we're going to go to a C drive, users, his name, going to come down to a blank spot here, right click, and we should have a paste option, paste. So that will just copy over his files. And since I'm dropping it into the uh, the new Brad folder, the user account folder, it will just, uh, all the files will appear when he goes to desktops. His desktop stuff will be there. Documents will be there. Um, downloads and so forth. And he didn't say he wanted me to see about um, transferring over email or setting anything else up. I'm pretty sure he was just after the files, so we should be good here. All right. Compare files. It's probably just the URL. Yeah, for Bing. So we'll keep the one that's already there. And it's done. So um, you can get um, an M.2 adapter like this. You can get on Amazon for 20, 30 bucks. I'll try and uh, put a link in the description of the video for this type. Also, uh, so this is a SATA type M.2. I'll put one for an NVMe type. NVMe and PCIe, um, sometimes those two are called the same, um, e either one of those names, NVMe or PCIe, um, will go into, uh, it, you can get one that looks exactly like this, but just uh, takes a different type. And I'll also put uh, a link, a, um, a SATA to USB uh, type. So if you have a SATA drive, either one like this, or um, uh, one that typically goes into a laptop, a two and a half inch, this is a three and a half inch, either a hard drive or solid state drive. You get a little cable, which I don't know what happened to it. I'll have to find it. But it plugs in one side here for data and power. And then on the other side, it basically has uh, USB-A, which is the standard USB type. You plug that in and it works like this. It just shows up as a drive on your computer. I'll put uh, links in the description there for that. But otherwise, we are done. Um, I'll see about maybe uh, doing something with his his old uh, laptop. So this right here is hardly stressed or very stressed. Whether or not that actually broke the traces in the motherboard is another thing, but that's a, that's a HDMI adapter. That would be very important uh, in order to get video out of this thing if I do something else with it. But thanks for watching.